Hello. I'm gonna do a quick card reading, but I wanna cover a few topics that I've been thinking about. And I'm gonna start by just explaining how I'm going to, if this is your first video, or if you've watched several of them, um, I tend to just ramble and get off on a lot of different tangents. I like to process the current energies and talk about what's going on as we move through different transits. But I also kind of like to touch on different topics that are going on in the world right now. And so what I talked about the other day, I think, yeah, I think it was yesterday I posted a video saying like, I'm going to do things differently. It's because I've been reviewing this process and I knew that like the only way to kind of figure out the best form of sharing certain ideas was to start doing it and let the process show me what um, what it needs to be, you know, and how it's meant to go. Um, and so I've gotten a lot of guidance lately from my spirit team around the structure and the organization of how I'm meant to share things. By that, I mean like making like courses and like seminars and like designing things, which is something that I've already done. In fact, I have, <clears throat> when I used to have a hands-on energy healing practice, I have all sorts of um, worksheets that I made around like inner child healing, all everything is hand drawn because I'm an artist and I'm obsessed with like my own handwriting and just connecting to the to the form of that. So <laughs> these are client agreements and disclosures for my healing practice. I haven't looked at any of this in a while, but um, my point is I already have a lot of different kinds of you know worksheets and mindfulness exercises and different kinds of things that I've done in the past. But the purpose of why I'm sharing this is because. Um, I've, I've understood that if I have any things to say for commentaries that come through on like, I don't know, the political scene or, um, oh, you know, all of this stuff around the Barbie movie that I've been talking about, it's, it's a relevant hot topic in the world, but it lends itself to talking about things like masculinity and femininity. And so I get a lot of channeled information throughout the day that can be about, you know, this or that topic. And what I'm being guided to do is start keeping my little notepad with me and just making notes, making notes, making notes, and gathering enough of what I want to say to then record a video or even just determine the best format. So sometimes maybe I'll make like different PowerPoints and I'll, um, I don't know, voice them over to kind of like touch on a topic or sometimes it will just be a randomized card reading, but I'm trying to separate the two of those things. And of course you can't really do that. I'm always going to connect things because that's what I'm meant to do. But, um, yeah, you know, it, <laughs> that's really funny because what I was just going to say is I have I almost lost the ability. Sometimes I would watch the videos that I just recorded because as I've said before, I can't always remember the information that I share. Um, and it's for me too as well, you know, the, the messages that come through from angelic guidance. Like the, the version of me that sits down to do these readings is the best version of myself because I am a human with an ego being stimulated, having issues out in the world needing to talk about, you know, remain in that pure positive peace and speak from love. All of the things that I share and all of the teachings are really, I, I find them as coming from outside of myself. So when I do the readings, it helps me bring that energy in and it helps me think about my life. But um, what I was going to say is that I, I stopped kind of reviewing the videos because I got so irritated with how frequently I say, you know, or like you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I'd like to remove that from my vocabulary. And I think that having a little bit more structure with these videos is gonna help me do that. Um, I basically wrote some notes and I was like, this is what they are right now. They're between 20 minutes and 120 minutes long, these videos. There's a lack of structure, they're unpredictable. I say, you know, and you know what I mean, way too much. What I'd like to do <clears throat> is pace myself, create more realistically accessible content so that it makes more sense as to what I'm actually gonna address in the videos. Um, I'm gonna do an idea building stage around certain more complex ideas that is just me kind of integrating all the messages I'm getting and then determining the best way of sharing that. Um, and that will set me up to be in a better position to actually like do, you know, build something around like, cause I wanna do, I wanna do guided meditations. I wanna do healing exercises. Um, in fact, I am going to read and post about this in a different video sometime soon, but I had somebody who I haven't seen in years, you know, but a friend, a friend, and <clears throat> they reached out and they said, I'm wondering if you can describe to me how I could leverage astrology to find a life partner. And I was like, I'm happy to tell you about that. And I wrote 
as you can imagine, like paragraphs back. Um, so I'm gonna read that and share that because that's a video unto itself, you know? I tend to lump all these things together, but I could record a 10 minute video about, you know, the way that I responded to that request because, you know, it makes a simpler situation. The video would be, this is how you can leverage astrology to find your life partner, you know, or something like that. So <clears throat> that's that. A few random messages that I wanted to share that have come through for me, like recently. Um, one of them is about organization, okay? So the same way that people say, a wise woman once said to me, throw out the idea of being in balance. You know, we always talk about work-life balance and like balance of this and that, and it's kind of unattainable. You know, we're humans, everything's always moving. So you kind of just do your best. And sometimes certain areas of your life do need more of your energy and attention. And you're just kind of touching, if you're in the middle of something and you've got all these external things around you, you can kind of go around in a circle and, you know, touch and tap on them as needed and kind of continue to move and spread yourself through the areas of your life that need your attention. But you can't ever really be accessing and fueling them all perfectly at the same time. So I liked her advice to me because it was, you know, you're never going to have that perfect balance. You're just going to always be refining, you know, the way that you can give yourself to these different projects and people and things. And it's up to you. Um, and there's always going to be room for growth in everybody's way of doing that, you know, achieving balance in their life. But the message that I got two days ago, I think it was, was about organization um, through a similar way of looking at it. Like throw out the idea of being organized. Some of us are like, well, I can't do that because I have to do this first and it's not ready and I have to get these things in order. Just go forth and be able to know that like there's a certain level of disorganization that's normal when you're trying to start things and do new things. Um, so I'm just sharing that because it was something that I needed to hear. I keep trying to make things as like I have, we're in Virgo season now. I have very perfectionistic tendencies because I have been making things for a long time and I like the process of having something in my mind and then I like to see it come out into the world and I like it to go the way that I thought it was gonna go. And that's why I pray so much for like, if not how I want, then even better. And that applies to artwork, to manifestations and experiences. I want it to be this good or better because then you remain in the space of detachment where it's like, I'm open to this coming in a different way. I'm open to it coming exactly how it's meant to, you know, the art piece coming out or the idea coming out or the manifestation coming in. I'm open to how that goes, but I've set my expectation around what it is I want to experience and what it is I want to make and what it is I want to do. Um, and so I think that if we, if we kind of like the issue with being a perfectionist or wanting to create things in a certain way or, or having an idea and then wanting to see it into fruition, you know, and helping it grow as you move through these phases of doing things differently and, and starting things. And I'm, I'm talking generally again on purpose, but the issue with that is micromanaging um, where there is actually micromanaging what's actually the universe's responsibility. So again, kind of going back into this idea about like, what can you control and what can't you control? Um, <clears throat> so that's just a little update about me and why I'm kind of trying to revise the way that I'm doing things. I don't think it's productive for me to, well, here, here's another thing. I like recording these videos because regardless of how many people see them, they're an archive of how I'm going through certain chapters of my life right now. And that's very important. And I know they're going to serve me over time. Um, <clears throat> But it's a lot of stuff, you know, if, if there's like a hidden gem of, of really good information, but that video is like an hour and a half long, it's just not very accessible. And I understand that, but I've been needing to do it this way to, to figure out more about it. So yeah, um, <clears throat> that's also kind of like a message, right? Just go, go ahead and start doing things and more will come as you go within that. So I'm going to pull some cards on the current energies and... I did have a couple, what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, I wanted to clarify what I was talking about the other day with um, mentioning like an ex-boyfriend and how we saw birthdays differently and how he was very traditional and like, you know, you have one day, you celebrate it. And I was saying it was this point of, point of conflict between us because I am somebody who likes to kind of celebrate my birthday for the whole week. And I'm not like, I, I said this before, it's not in a bridezilla type of way where I'm expecting anybody. It's not material. That is what I wanted to clarify because I understand that if somebody was listening to me and heard me say that, they'd be like, well, I wouldn't want to do that either. That's a lot of pressure, you know? If I was your partner expecting 
and you were expecting me to celebrate you all week, I wouldn't, you know, that's a lot to do. Like, what is it that you're looking for? It's like, no, I in no way would expect like gifts every day for a week. It's not like that. It has to do more with what I like to refer to as vacation mentality, where it's like, I'm giving myself the gift, the whole gift is just being in that mind state and treating it like a special time, doing things a little bit differently, not needing to do certain things. Um, and by that, I mean like, I don't know, the, the grueling head down everyday life. It, this time around my birthday, I just want to have as this like free space of celebration that is akin to the way that we feel when we're on vacation. That is what I was like requesting of my partner and they didn't want me to do that for them. They just wanted it to be the one day and then before and after there, it didn't matter. And um, so I don't know, I just wanted to clarify that it's not about, it's not about any of the material stuff. It's about the fact that, you know, celebrations in life, there are many of them. And the one that, the one that is yours and yours alone, it's okay to go about that the way that you want. Um, so onto the cards. I'm really excited for this full moon that's coming up. It's going to be um, really exciting, 11-11 as I look up. And what I've said, <laughs> it's so interesting because I go through these phases of my life and then I, I said this the other day, but like during times of retrograde, people tend to reach out to people from the past. It just kind of happens that way. For me, it's been like just friends I haven't heard from in a long time. And I <laughs> I also said this the other day, but like if you've known me for 15 years, like this is my moment in history <laughs> as far as like my belief systems and all. I know a lot of people feel this way who see spiritual stuff, but like I've been waiting for this time. And a lot of people from the past are like, huh, <laughs> I bet Mariah has something to say about this. I do. I do. I'm here talking about it on my YouTube channel. So, um... Yeah, having people reach out. What I was saying in the way of advice to a couple friends the other day, it was like everything that you want right now, you have the ability to fear it and be uncomfortable with these changes, or you have the ability to sit down and make a list about like, this is how good it could go. I'm excited, you know? I'm actually lucky that I'm kind of out of my depth because that means that I'm gonna grow into the space that the universe is guiding me, you know, into this large clearing. You're gonna be able to fill up that space with your gifts and your talents and your and your intellect and all of the things that you can offer the world, even if you don't know how that's gonna happen. It's probably because you have certain things inside of you that you haven't accessed yet. And that's why we're going through so many of the changes that we're going through. Like I'm included in that. Like I know for a fact that I'm, like I have so many different experiences, you know, the clairvoyance and the this and the that. This is still just the beginning. Like I know I've had visions of myself when I'm 40. Like the way that we all evolve, there's no like, you don't do it. It's not done. Like everything's just kind of expanding and we're all kind of getting on board with what we, how we are as humans, you know, in a, in a redefined way that isn't um, locked in by the way that we, you know, the way that the default world or the, um, you know, the matrix and the, the, the ways that the world operates, just kind of starting to function outside of that. And I love, like, I love everything I see on the internet of people just being like, you know, like women in, in waterfalls being like, we wanna be out here, we don't wanna be in the office, like all these people, we, it's not, it's not too much to ask or request, you know? A lot of people just wanna be outside and in nature and commune with each other and have a bargaining economy and, and grow their own food and like all this goodness and, um, I wrote something the other day. Is it this one? Yeah. <clears throat> I'll put it on the screen. It says, I'm starting to understand why I was born. Because I am. Because a lot of the, oh my gosh, um, just a beautiful light work mission. A light work mission to bring light here, to share messages, to make things. Um, there's a lot about my life's purpose that I'm starting to understand um, in a deeper way. By the way, I wanted to finish what I was saying. Literally maximize this full moon. It's a time of completion, okay? So on the 30th, we have a full moon. It's a magnificent moon. I recommend doing some reading around this moon or like, you know, what is, just you can Google, what does the full moon mean, the super moon? You're gonna get scientific articles that talk about what it's gonna look like as it's close to earth, but you're also gonna get insightful, you know, energy readings and I would just use your discernment, but just to kind of inform yourself, like I cannot emphasize enough how powerful this time is and how you use it like that, like that slingshot. Like it doesn't, it was 14, 44, 444. It doesn't actually, 
It doesn't actually take as much effort as it usually would right now to kind of maximize this with intention. It's all about intention. Maximize this energy to get a lot done, to move, this is like the quantum leap thing, to move miles ahead in your, in your goals in the next four months just by having intentions set right now. Um, and then being able to occupy that space of the unknown around the things that we're still fearful about, just transmute that into nervous excitement. It's okay to have the anxiety there already. But here's the thing about trying to see into the future, okay? Or see how things are going to go. Or judge if you should do something or not based on how you think it's going to go. Here's the issue with that. A lot of the times when we try to see all sides of something we're overthinking and some of that thinking is productive but a lot of what happens in that state of trying to see is anxiety and it's just the clutter and the chatter of the mind it's not the truth of it the truth of it is that you're thinking about doing something and you're trying to anticipate if it's going to go well or not and that's not your job really you know why don't you just commit yourself to knowing that if if you want to do something if you want to start something if you want to say something you know, go for it and the world will move as you move and then you'll move in exchange and you'll kind of keep going. That's how I've started recording these videos, right? Um, so it says we're not meant to be like this and then there's, it's a, it's a crudely drawn, maybe I won't put it on the screen, I'll just hold it up. We're not meant to be like this little guy on the computer. We're meant to be like this. And then it's supposed to be, you know, a picture of a woman in a gown who has like angel wings and she's being lifted into the air by a dragon who's on a leash. I mean, dragons shouldn't be on leashes, but anyway, we're not meant to be like how we've been. We're meant to be, we're meant to be different. <clears throat> the reason why I've been talking about, um, oh, okay. <laughs> I have another clarification that I wanted to make. It was... It was said to me in my dream last night that I need to explain for one of my viewers, I don't know which one of you, I don't know who and why, it could be somebody who watches it, you know, five years from now, but that's probably not the case. No, it's for somebody who's already listened to my videos and they need to know what I mean by star family. Okay, so um, without talking too much about the alien thing more, it's more so, it's, it's like star family. Um, some people say that aliens are almost like us as humans in the future, you know? And a lot of people talk about past lives, but not a lot of people talk about future lives. And in the energy matrix, you know, as I talked about when someone transitions spiritually, right? In heaven, I mean, in, in, Christian, in Christian view, you go to heaven or hell, it's over, right? Eternal. I don't really see things that way. I kind of see all of creation in life as like, just it's gonna, it's gonna keep going. There's no end game, that's the whole thing. And once you realize that, you're like, okay, I'm gonna dance with life, cosmic joke, blah, la di da. And then you're like, but why? To have joy and, and experience unconditional love and then create from that, right? That's my um, understanding of why we're, why we're alive at all, is to just realize it and be like, okay, cool, I'm good with this. And I know, my, you know, I know myself and what I can do here. Being an older soul who has a lot of like memories incarnationally and energetically, I've always had that since I was a kid, you know, like coming into this world and being like, okay, I get how this works. Um, but then it translated into being a very, you know, rebellious child and stuff like that. Cause I was like, oh, like if, if I were to talk to my inner child, she is in many cases, even in my life today as an adult, she is in many cases throwing a tantrum because she's screaming, why is it like this? <laughs> I am constantly having to soothe myself from being frustrated at the different, you know, ways of the world that are not right. Because there's something inside me that knows something else. And I'm like, this is not the way that this world is supposed to be. Because I think that I lived here on this world, you know, before. So anyway, the whole notion of like, what is the fate of humans? Are we going to evolve into kind of like these, you know, people talking about implants, Neuralink with Elon Musk and all these things. Are we going to become these cyborgy like whatever? It's like you can imagine we start to live in space. We kind of do kind of morph over time. And I'm talking hundreds, if not thousands and millions of years, right? If there is no end. It can take as long as it needs to for us to kind of blend into the stars and have a more interdimensional experience. Um, I believe that ancient, ancient cultures were a little bit more like that, you know? There's myths about giants and you know beings and gods it's kind of more from my understanding of it historically that's when there was this alien you know or like angel integration it's still here on earth today but it's just that um it's all been cast into shadow and illusion because the ways the, the ways 
think of the Wizard of Oz, right? The man behind the curtain. The powers that are in charge of the earth today have everybody cast into these, um, you know, spells. And I see all of it as truly being governed by like, um, Okay, well, maybe I'll just say this here now. Throughout a study that I learned about, I'm sorry if I've already shared this, I don't think I have. No, I shared it in a video that I never posted. Somebody studied different groups of people, tribes and whatnot, um, from all over the world. And no matter where in the world or how developed the, the people in terms of like first world, third world, throughout history and stuff if there's a group of people if it becomes large enough the more powerful people will will take advantage of the less powerful people and you're defining that you know however you want it's just the dynamic of an expanding group right some people have a natural like leadership or dominant um thing that emerges and some people are more following and passive one is not actually better than the other right people inhabit space the way they're meant to some people don't like to take initiative and be the idea person. They like to just like, once the idea is in place, what gives them pure positive energy is implementing that and being on part of a team and not being like the head of that. So in collectives, and you could see all of the human race as this or the different countries, the purpose of government was to have, so, so tribally, right? In a small enough population, they didn't really need to instate anything to take care of that issue that naturally arises. Because it was a small enough group of people so that there was this kind of reciprocity and understanding and it never got into a corruptive state. But the purpose of government was to prevent, prevent that from happening or when it started to happen, have a way for the people to choose who those others were who are going to be the ones who are, you know, the leaders and the ones who kind of manage the organization of the functioning society that the people comprise. And it's like, <clears throat> We are very, very much living in a time where all of the powerful um, chess pieces on the board uh, are trying to create outcomes that do not benefit the public, unfortunately. So if you still believe that what's happening on earth is meant to benefit the people, I don't think that it is. I think that the, it's the people's time to be like, maybe not this, maybe not, you know? And the, the lingering weirdness that I experience and see as far as like the global struggles that keep unfolding, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't trust, I, I simply don't trust that the narrative around why certain things are happening or what is even happening, I don't. I don't trust any of that. I think that there's, you know, underground laboratories, like, you know, floors and floors and floors, like Google the Denver airport. Anyway, there's a lot of, a lot of weird stuff. Um, and it doesn't, doesn't matter. Cause as I've said before, it's like, we render it obsolete when you realize that it's a, simply an energy matrix, right? It's a, it's a, <clears throat> From simulation theory, you could even think of like the world as like everybody lives in different realities. It's all about the vibration you inhabit and what you let yourself to think and believe and what you choose to focus on. So I'm going to finish my thought about the star family thing. So same way, same way that you could have a past life and I have the ability to connect to, you know, I talked about Hannah, who's one of my um, actual ancestors from my lineage, from my bloodline in this life, but she was my daughter in a different life. She was my sister in a different life. Um, and in the future, like there, there's a future life where I'm gonna be with them again, somehow physically, right? So there's this um, connection that a lot of people have who do spiritual work. Like we all have different connections. We all have ancestors, um, but certain people resonate with different groups of ETs because it might be like where your spirit has a future incarnation. So um, I shared this before, like the Pleiadians, I'm very connected to them. Um, also the Lyran, um, I think they're like a cat. There's like a feline um, <clears throat> connection with them. I actually don't even know these. So these are the types of things that like for me are still expanding and like I've remembered so many things spiritually, but it never really stops. You can always have a more you know, crystal and clear recollection of these different, like, other dimensional spiritual experiences. And so I haven't 
um, gone into that so much. <clears throat> but I hope that clarifies, you know, star family. Kind of like guides, kind of like angels and ancestors, but also potentially, you know, real beings. I don't really like the word alien. <laughs> Um, real beings that exist, they just exist in a different way. You can kind of think of them as ancestors who have died. They're not gone. They're just in a different part of the energy body that comprises everything in existence. The aliens, quote unquote, they're like that too. They kind of exist in a different frequency and a wavelength, but we're still connected. So Now my friend's here from out of town and I haven't seen her in months and months, so we're just gonna have a fabulous little day together, having a good time, hanging out with the dog, get out, getting out in nature. Um, so this is gonna be a quick read. I guess it was a just little little chat, little update. Um, but the energy that I'm gonna do is the overarching, because I will do a full moon reading. I think I'll probably take a couple days off and then I'll do the full moon reading. Um, but I wanted to do the update, clarify the star family thing, talk a little bit about whatever it is I've just said for the past 25 minutes. And so first card I pick is going to be the overall energy right now. And then I'm going to do energy to, let's just see. But my point was she's, she's getting ready showering and stuff and she has long hair like me. So it takes her like an hour to shower and, um, that's why I decided to come up here and do this because I wanted to get that message out first. Okay. All right. So I am just going to draw them from the top because you saw me shuffle and I cut the deck and it's just going to be the current energy influencing us right now. <laughs> It's the emperor. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. By the way, I posted all of the horoscopes for Mercury retrograde. Um, Alex Miles is an astrologer and all of the content that I see from social media, all of it is always found on Instagram because I don't do anything else. I don't have a Twitter or an X or whatever the fuck that's called these days. Um, don't have a TikTok, don't have a Facebook. I do, but it's just an archive for how my life was 10 years ago. <clears throat> um, so anyway, I see her work on Instagram and I like it. I find it to be very resonant. Here's the other thing about, this morning I was thinking about resonating, if something resonates with you. It's because a lot of the people that share information have the ability like myself to translate the energy into something, you know, an analogy or an explanation when things resonate with you, it's because you also feel that way. You see it too. You feel it too. And maybe you would translate it <clears throat> similarly, right? So the reason why somebody would watch videos from a person like me is to corroborate their own experience and help themselves feel more sane because what they're going through, you know, because they're on a similar frequency to me, you know, I, all I can access is what my vibrational experience yields to me. Um, and it's going up real quick. Like I'm expanding a lot right now in a great way, you know, emperor energy, taking charge. This is Aries energy. This is like confident, but not crazy, right? Just like grounded, um, reliable, um, authoritative, but not too domineering, right? And like I was just talking about the people of power taking advantage of the people of less power. That's not this because there's this fairness about it too. He is the counterpart to the empress and she's all about, you know, She's very maternal. He's very paternal. <clears throat> so that's excellent. There's probably no better card for current energy affecting us that I could have pulled because of what I said before around the fact that like, it's the time to take the action around the things that you are trying to do this time now for the next four months. Use this time to think about how good the rest of 2023 can be for you. When you do that, you're also planning out the next like three to four or five years. Heck, I don't know. It could be the next decade, you know? There's so much potential. I can't emphasize it. There's so much energetic potential right now. Like, I can show you. I've got, um, I'm, I'm something of a vision boarder. I love, I love, I actually host vision boarding parties and events at my house. I'll, like, clear everything out, and I'll have, like, trays and trays of glitter and, like, dozens of magazines, and I put out this huge spread of appetizers, and I invite my girlfriends over, and we make collages. 
you know, and like set intentions and stuff. And part of me doing that is knowing that eventually one day I'm going to be like hosting different kinds of workshops and having, you know, the vibe. Like I love just like the candles, having everything all set up, the crystals. I get all my cards. I bring them down in this tray that I have. People can pull cards and just sharing the good vibes, but it's all about creating, putting outside of ourselves, right? On a vision board. I'm not going to show them or share them because that feels, it's kind of ironic. I'm so vulnerable and open about how I share, but I'm not, those are my like, you know, those are my dreams. I'm not going to show them, but they're beautiful. Um, and I'm, I'm not necessarily recommending anybody make a vision board. It's just whatever it is that gets you into a space of being more excited than you are nervous. That's super important right now because you have to trust that even if it's a version of yourself that you haven't embodied yet, it exists. It's wanting to come, you know, it's wanting the universe, your ancestors, your guides, they're wanting you to step into the clearing where that version of yourself exists. And that's really cool. So the purpose of the vision boards for me is when I look at it, my brain's like, yay, yummy, good stuff. I love it. You know, there's pictures of, what am I seeing right now? There's pictures of like beautiful, like mountain ranges and stuff from like vacation spots I want to go to. There's pictures of gorgeous tattoos that I want to get. Pictures of really gorgeous interior design stuff. Everything that I look at, it doesn't matter what it is because the vision boarding is kind of a material process because there's, you know, cutting out images and whatnot of things that already exist, but it's the combination of all of the things. It's very colorful. I love bright patterns, color, you know, um, and you could think, I'm so sorry about the noise, by the way, I didn't think about that till now. My dog is chewing on something. So uh, it's another reason why I want to add some structure to my channel because <laughs> I don't even think about things like that. And then it doesn't make for a very pleasant viewing experience, I would imagine, but I'm used to it. Um, Whatever it is that, that you look at, it, it feels like the style of my life. Like if I had a sense of fashion or a sense of taste, right? I'm like, what? how does that apply to every single area of my life, right? The, the, the people around me, the food I like, like how can I extend my sense of taste to the things that I wanna see in my world? Like picking the things that I like, right? Um, so I do vision boarding digitally too. Like I'll screenshot a bunch of things and I'll take those photos on my phone and I'll put them into an album and I will scroll through that album and just like meditate over those images because I like the way they make me feel, you know? And that's even like pictures of somebody who got their nails done and I think it's a really cute design. That will be in there, right? Or a picture of a really amazing puppy who I'm like, maybe one day I'll have one like that. <laughs> um, those things for me, there's no point, there's no purpose. It's all about putting myself into that bath, that frequency bath of being like, this is the goodness of life. And it's represented by material things, but for me, it has to do with the frequency of feeling very like peaceful and abundant and all, I like to make things beautiful. That's why I'm like covered in glitter a lot of the time because my studio, there's like piles of sparkles everywhere, you know? It's because I want to bring as much beauty and light from the other realms, like from the angelic realms that I'm privileged enough to see that, that everybody is, you know, you just have to tap in and get into it. And I have a pretty natural connection on it, but I want to bring that here. I want us to, and that's why people who are in this uh, dialogue around the expanding world and the spiritual changes and everything that's happening and light workers and whatnot. That's why people talk about new earth or like heaven on earth because it's all about creating this, you know, the thing that harkens back to the way that humans used to be before this, before this crazy stuff started going down. So this is the current energy that's impacting us and we can own that. Just own it. Just own it and do things with it and be like, fuck yeah. I, uh, I forgot to ask my question, but I looked at the card. So now uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put, it's the seven of, it's the, sorry, it's the five of wands. So there is some conflict here. Um, I'm just going to channel, I'm just going to channel and talk about it. And then I'm going to put it back in the deck and then I'm going to proceed with the reading. What I'm seeing here is that you should not get caught up in any of the petty conflicts that you're above now. Okay. So if you could see the most evolved, like, grounded like focused and by that i mean you just don't waste your energy on stuff that's not going to serve you you know you're not gonna you're not gonna burn your fuel doing you know frivolous things like proving somebody wrong or you know making sure that other people know why you're so a lot of the times in my life when i meet people or talk to people um i don't know typically they don't really for whatever reason expect me to be as um intelligent and odd and aware as I am and I don't necessarily 
make that known right away. When I was younger, I, I really had a lot to prove because I felt like people were constantly not understanding who I was or what I could do or what I brought to the table. And so I would just, I kept trying to prove it really, you know, and now it's like, it doesn't actually matter to me if somebody knows who I am or not, you know, I'll just take up the space I need to and um, let that be enough for me because it is. <laughs> So don't engage in any type of like, you know, there's a lot of, and I go back to stirring the soup, right? What soup are you gonna stir? I got my little cauldron of sparkles here in goodness. And I'm like, I, I'm letting that be more important than any of the petty conflict in, in my life. So just a cautionary word, right? Don't use your power to get caught up stirring the wrong soup. All right, energy to embrace, energy to release. Energy to embrace is the Queen of Wands. Energy to release is the Hermit. Queen of Wands. Um, so, yeah, I mean, current energy affecting us. She's the confident, driven queen out of all of them, you know. Um, and I mentioned, like, the feline Lyran thing. There's, like, a feline connection with the Lyrans. I know I got off on a tangent, and I never clarified what I was saying with that. But um, people who have strong Leo placements, by the way, I think they tend to have Lyran connections if they are, you know, old old souls and have had different incarnational experiences. Because Leo is the lion, right? And Leos also tend to have good hair. People who have strong Leo placements in their chart. That could be sun, moon, or rising sign. And then mine's in Venus. Um, tend to have good hair. But anyway, it's embracing the more... The more um, still driven but like the softness of that like i can be and i said this before my rising sign is aries that's why i can um uh be in be in positions of leadership or not you know i i feel very strongly about things and i stand in my power and i share them and but it needs to be tempered with like a nurturing essence you know what we're releasing is the need to be alone. We're not alone. Even if you choose to spend time alone, you're held and you're seen by the universe. And I think that we know that now. And so you can kind of go forth with what I talked about yesterday. Like even if you get a little bit in the fog and things don't seem to make sense, just, you know, firefly, right? Don't go chase the light. It will come back to you. Maybe if you're not seeing the way forward, you're not meant to. Especially right now, I'm getting people reaching out to me, um, you know, not from this channel, just in my life being like, it seems a little helter skelter. What's going on? I'm like, just hang tight. You know, the way the way will part. The clouds will dissolve. It's going to make sense here. Don't make any big, bold, intense decisions before. Um, I don't know. Let's get into September. How about, you know, I think that I think that the dust will settle a little bit because full moon always stirs up all this craziness and we're definitely feeling the energy and we're going to be feeling it for about, I don't know, a week after it happens. Um, so you know, whatever you've got to do within yourself, even if you're needing to spend time alone, spend time with others, what this has to do with is like the hermiting. Hermiting is not a bad thing. I'm definitely, I'm always hermiting, honestly. I can only take so much social interaction. And sometimes I don't do anything social for a long time because I'm doing other things. <laughs> but there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Um, and I don't, I don't really get lonely. And it's because I'm always processing, you know, my, my energy and offering it to where it's needed. So releasing that hermiting energy of like, um, also kind of like a lone traveler, right? You're not really alone on your journey, even if um, a life of solitude is what you would like. I met a woman at the dog park the other day and she, she told me she was 45. She never had kids. She never got married. And she's never been happier. And all of her friends want to get a divorce. They hate their lives. They have children. It's all messy. And, you know, it's because that's what people are expected to do. And everybody walked the path and settled down with people who just brought out aspects of their unhealedness. And they triggered each other. And they aren't in love. And they are raising children who are living in a household that doesn't have love in it. You know, that's that's really unfortunate. There's a lot of people that don't understand that to remain together in a toxic relationship is more damaging to your children than to separate. Because, you know, children do not learn from what you say. Children learn from what you do. So, I was really, you know, happy to meet her. We had a great chat. <clears throat> the only thing is that she said, look at all these people gesturing to the other people at the park. I'm way more happier here, you know, doing this than any of them. 
And that for me where I was like, okay, you know, people inadvertently all the time show you where their growth is needed. And she was saying, I'm happier than them. It's not about being anything more than anybody else. So in my mind, I'm like, she's saying that out loud because she's trying to remind herself that it's true, right? If it was really true, it, it, it's showing that there's a little bit of an insecurity. She, if you have to say, I'm happier than them all, if you have to say that out loud to somebody, or if that's the type of thing that you say out loud, it's coming from the subconscious fear that maybe, you know, like you're defending the fact that you did things differently. You don't have to. Why can't they be happy? You know, there was a young couple in their early 30s and she had one of those baby carriers on, a man and a woman, and they had their baby. Like who's to say they're not just as happy as she is? So it's not about being more or less than anybody else. It's about, that's her path. That's what she wanted to do. That's how she wanted to live her life. And that's worked for her. But then the same day, this was two days ago, I was with my friend, I chatted with her, chatted with this other guy. He's in his late 50s and he's, you know, he was married for over 20 years and never really dated before that. So he finds himself in a really challenging position and um, really wants to settle down and find somebody. And, you know, I've always said I'm, I like chatting with strangers. I don't necessarily, if a man speaks to me, I don't assume that they're hitting on me because I just don't why would I like I'm a human we're allowed to um not to say I don't get hit on a lot because I do and that's what he was saying we were trying to you know kind of he was talking about dating apps and how hard it was and I said me and my friend were sitting there chatting with him I said to him like and I'll I'll talk about this more because this is what I said in response to the person that reached out to me who asked me how they could leverage astrology I said to him I don't think you know you should use them they're they're pretty toxic um they create a culture of people viewing things as like disposable and it's all about how you represent yourself. It's not, it's, I, I think they're shrouded in bad energy and that they're kind of creating some problematic stuff within both men and women. Um, and I shared about that weeks ago when I was talking about how I saw this transcript that someone posted on the internet about this guy confirming a date with a girl and she just canceled it because she was like, this is a, you're doing the bare minimum, blah, blah, blah. Like this is all skewed and, and weird and you know, so anyway, this guy says to me, all due respect, you're a beautiful woman. So you have, you don't, you're not, you don't understand what I'm going through. You know, you have so many options. And then he said, I, I'm not implying that it's easy to be a beautiful woman. I know that it's not. I'm sure that, you know, it comes with its challenges. And I'm like, thanks for saying that. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he, he was talking about, he was talking about why he is not a lovable person and how hard it is and stuff. And I know that my experience, um, he was saying, you know, the, the more attractive you are, the more options you have and stuff. And um, <clears throat> I'll share in this more in a later video because I'm really going off on one. This is the type of thing that I'm going to try to get away from so that I can make them a little bit more focused. Um, but it's also just how I talk and think about things. So anyway, I'm going to put a pin in that for now. It's It's just interesting because somebody will always be able to look at me and say, well, you wouldn't get it because you have this or you are that. Instead of realizing that I'm trying to extend kind of my empathy and my insights on the world to, to a way that could apply to people who are very different from me. Um, and at the end of that conversation with that guy, I was thinking, you know, he keeps talking about why it's all bad and why he's not having any success within this. And, and I would, my biggest recommendation to him would be like, just pour into yourself. You're very, very focused on the absence of a partner from your life. And it's taking the flashlight, the bulb, the bulb of your attention, shining it into that void, you know? And when I talk about the future and manifestation and the quality of your mind, therefore your vibration, he's calling in more lack when he does that. It doesn't have to do with being, you know, older or younger or overweight or not, or, or, or conventionally attractive or, or not or whatever, you know? It doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with the fact that every day his inner dialogue is like, oh, I can't, you know, if he gets, if he asks a woman out or something and, and she says no, and he, he, he's constantly focused on why it's not working, you know? And it's like when people really want love, and I know, I know that there's a lot of people who right later in life, the marriage didn't work out, whatever. If you... Well, this isn't later in life. This is literally anybody, literally anybody who wants a relationship. Stop looking for one. 
that's the advice. Stop looking for one, pour it into yourself, focus on inner harmony with yourself, balancing the masculine polarity within yourself, however that expresses within you. You know, you could be a man or a woman, you could, be, you could be a transgendered man or woman, or you could be any sexual orientation. Everybody gets to pick how they, you know, are within their masculine and feminine polarity and what that means for their sexuality. Everybody gets to, I, nobody, nobody else can tell anybody else what that means for them. And so I think that, you know, people need to go through phases of healing um, their inner polarities. Because if you don't do that, the people that you attract into partnerships are going to be people that kind of reflect the same level of unhealedness in, you know, a, con a complementary way to your unhealedness. And that's not a bad thing. You don't have to be a perfect healed person to have a relationship. It's a good thing um, because it helps you, but it will highlight those areas, right? And then you'll you'll grow together or or not and things can become productive and you can be, it depends, it, it depends on so many different things. But my point is... Um, you know, he was kind of looking at me saying, you'll never understand what I'm going through. And my life is doomed. And I don't really have this ability to um, date or find anybody. And, and what I gained from that conversation was, you know, yes, I, I won't know what it's like to be, um, you know, a 56 year old man who can't find love. I, I won't, I won't know what that's like. But what I do know is that um, it didn't really look, I'm not trying to judge, I'm just saying it doesn't it didn't really seem like he took care of himself very much you know um and I just mean like personal care around like personal personal hygiene right and um wearing clean clothes those are acts of self-love it's not about being vain it's just about the fact that it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs um keeping keeping your basic needs met and I'm big on self-care because I <laughs> I want to feel amazing, right? It takes a lot of work to feel amazing. It does, actually. I'm talking about getting back into exercise because I haven't been feeling as amazing as I want to. <laughs> I want to feel that way again. I've been feeling spiritually amazing and just letting myself kind of not focus on my body so much because I want, I've want. i been focusing on my, you know, my mind and my soul. This goes back to the idea of balance. It's okay to kind of sprinkle your attention in the different areas of your own self-development because you can't conquer it all at once, right? So... So what I do know is that he he kind of convinced himself that no one no one will get it and and stuff and I didn't claim to understand what he was going through because I know that I cannot understand it. But he has the ability to see things much differently and start to love himself. Because every time it doesn't work out for him, he was saying I haven't been able to get someone's number in months even though I try. Every time that happens, he takes it to mean that he is not like worthy of any of that, you know? And, and one might say, I mean, it's not working for him. So the evidence is real. He has to look at the facts. Um, yes. Okay. But I, yeah, it's hard to talk about the desperation energy, right? I've talked a lot with different people about desperation energy because a lot of people want certain things really badly. We're a desperate group. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, people can be in desperation energy and um, what is very important, no matter what you want, no matter who you are, is when you're desperate for something in a negative way, then you're sabotaging it because it's implying and communicating energetically to the universe that you don't think that you can actually get it. So he has to start my advice to him, which I didn't say to his face. It's not really, I'm not going to get into like full channel workshop mode with a stranger in the park. Sometimes I do. Um, but anyway, like you need to be able to first convince yourself that it's even possible. Cause he kept trying to tell us, me and my friend, why it wasn't possible for him to meet a woman. And I was like, okay, you convinced me you're unlovable. Congrats. You're right. You know, would not, I would never say that either. I'm just making a point, but it's like, it sounds like, it sounds like you don't even think you can, you know, be with somebody, but you really want it. So, so why don't you believe that you can have it? Because it hasn't worked out. Well, why hasn't it? You know, maybe, maybe because, because of this, like constantly seeking and my life isn't good until I find that every day, your life is passing you by. And I just think that people who are really desperate to find somebody uh, have some type of unrealized 
thing inside that where they feel like if they did their life would be better you know and their life would be good or complete and then they'd be able to buy a house and then they'd be able to start their family and I'm not saying that those things can't happen that way but um hang on one second. basically If I had been talking to him as the version of myself that does these readings, or if he was one of my clients, I would work with him to understand and deconstruct why he sees himself the way he sees himself, what has led to that, what he's looking for in a partner, how he goes about, how he feels about the idea of looking for a partner, because I can almost guarantee that we'd be able to kind of break this down. It's not about really energy healing. It has a lot to do with, you know, psychology and trauma and all these different things and the primary role models of mother and father. And um, I have a lot of insight into that. And I don't have to be single and 56 and overweight like him to get what he's going through. Um, but yeah. All right, moving on. So we've got Emperor. This is the current energy affecting us. Energy to embrace. Just so lovely, by the way. Energy to release. These are major arcanas, okay? The biggest hidden energy, the most, the most prominent affecting hidden energy right now is the Knight of Swords. So things are changing really quickly. You might also have somebody or something coming in quickly or soon to tell you something, right? This could be incoming news for a number of reasons. Um, energy to embrace is the queen of wands, but what is it that the universe is asking us to focus on? The lingering self-sabotage. So here's interesting. This is interesting. Okay. I can use this example with this man at the dog park um, to talk about devil energies because sometimes people are like, I don't have any addictions. Like I'm pretty straight edge and stuff. The devil energy in his mind is um, the intrusive thoughts about unworthiness and how no one would ever want to be with him. And the world has proven that to him because of how hard he's tried to find somebody to be with. There's a devil energy around that because there's probably some obsessive thought patterns that he possesses that are stirring the soup of devil energies. It's everything that tells you, you know, it's, it's what keeps you separated from God. It's the opposite, right? Anything that keeps you stuck in a place that you're creating a self-imposed prison. The reason why people do that is because they believe that it's true, right? So... You know, the devil's sneaky. This is what this is what they say. Really, really, really take take this eye of love, this vantage point of love, this lens of love, put it over all of the things that you're doing and being like, maybe that's an expression of me not loving myself. As much as I deserve to. How this is manifesting for me right now is like Oh, I've had a very hard time <laughs> transitioning out of the fun part of young adulthood. Now, hear me out. Life is fun. Life is meant to be fun. I don't have to like get serious and settle down and become an adult. But I, I, I have struggled with self-sabotaging around this work and, and my other passions and stuff. You know, I could create a lot of stuff. I really could. I already have. <laughs> I have time. I have I've probably made thousands of paintings in my life, you know? I've got, I, sh I had an idea the other day for a video because I have over, I have tons and tons of journals um, where like on one of the portals in the fall, I would get all my journals up here and then I would go back to like, if it was November 11th, I'd go back to every 11-11 throughout the past 10 years and read from those journals to see how the energy has progressed through the 11-11s, you know, from my life. But what I'm trying to say is like, my one of my version of devil energies is like this subconscious fear that if I apply myself to the work that my spirit guides, like my life purpose, that it will fail. And that because I have received a lot of feedback um, around my dreams and my ideas around like, oh, I don't know, you know, the starving artist or like 
that's not, you know, people being like, where's, who, how are you going to, just the doubters, right? All of that was heavier than my belief that I could do it. So I, I was kind of just <sighs> flailing around wanting to do it, but not believing that I, that I could. And I know I'm talking kind of vaguely here. It's, I'm making an example out of it, but basically like just really realizing that sometimes when I'm like, I'm just, I'm just having fun. Like I'm just treating myself. I'm just exploring my life. Maybe it is self-sabotage because on a deeper level, I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. I do want to make things. I do want to not not settle down, <laughs> but focus my gifts and my talents in the areas that they're trying to express themselves. It's like a huge change. I've always been I've always been making stuff, but it, it tends to not, um, you know, go go anywhere in a more serious way and it has to do it has to do this is not as elegant as I intended because I thought it would make a lot more sense to kind of bring in my personal narrative around this devil energy stuff right now but it's not so I'm gonna go in a different direction um basically just realizing that I am the one who can either believe in my stuff or not I'm the one it doesn't matter what other people think I'm the one who can decide if I want to do it or not and I've decided that I do and it's been very liberating because I'm like, I don't know what I was so afraid of. Um, now, here's the other thing. You you just have to make sure you're spiritually protected. It doesn't mean that I'm like free and all my projects are going to be perfect and everyone's going to love me. Ne that will never happen. <laughs> that will never happen. But that's OK, too. I'm OK with that. Makes me a little nervous, but I've actually decided that I'll probably put the comment section on in the future because I like the idea that that creates a community, you know? And that people would be able to share their own experiences and, and um, also be able to be like, hey, you never finish saying that because it happens all the time, right? And I never fin remember. That's not true. I'm pretty good actually at remembering my open loops. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Um, just conquering these different kinds of like fears or self-limiting beliefs because you are the one who has the ability to Continue with them or not. It's only you. Doesn't matter what people say. And I'm not, I, I'm not the type of person who's like, fuck the haters. No. That's like what all like, I've talked about this before too, like pop music and stuff. Like fuck bitches and get money and like be on the top and blah, 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 blah. It, it, why does everything have to be at someone else's expense? It doesn't. <laughs> A lot of the times you'll have like groups of friends, you know, if somebody's going through something really hard and then the, the other people are comforting them, they'll be like, well, fuck them. They don't get it. And that's the only way to make the person feel better because then they'll be like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Fuck them. <laughs> like, I mean, people don't like this all the time, but how I act in those situations, people do like this more and more because I'm more tactful about doing it. I've been doing this a lot recently with the people that I, you know, frequent in conversation and chatter and personal relation and whatever I kind of become the nemesis that they're talking about I feel into the nemesis's position and I'm like what I can what what if they were feeling like this when they said that and this is why they did that how would that change your perception of it I'm trying to go over and help that camp out too because we can learn things from our ad adversity you know we can learn things from the things that are our big that's that's where the most learning takes place so I take issue with the whole fuck the haters thing because it's like, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, th those people need healing though, you know? We just throw people in jail and they have horrible experiences and they get released and they commit more crime. It's just, a, that's, it's, it's just all about the people that are the worst need the most help. It's all a cry for help. Every horrible adult has an unhealed inner child. It's just a fact. They just do, you know? When, when, I, when I meet a horrible person, I'm not like, fuck you. I'm like, oh my God, what happened to you? You know, I pray, I'll pray for you. I hope you have the strength one day to, to realize that certain things were not your fault. And I hope that you can go within and release yourself from all of this, you know, protective armor that you've built up around you. And, and this is, I mean, this is how I think about abused dogs. That's an easy way to see it. 
they weren't born like that. They were born beautiful and pure and they were hurt and they became violent and unsocial and skittish. So, oh my gosh, the videos on the internet that will make like, I was sobbing the other day because it was a video of this really like crusty little busted up puppy with broken legs and he had sores all over his body and somebody found him and then they were nursing him back to health and he was wagging, he had all his fur and it just took a few months. He just needed some love. <laughs> my God. Uh, yeah, I had another really beautiful thought the other day because I, I've, I've shared about this man in a different video, but there's a guy who lives down the street from me. I don't even know his name. Um, he feeds the stray cats and he's like my neighborhood buddy, you know, and he'll drive by and I'm like, I like having neighborhood buddies. I like being friendly, you know, with people. I love that. Um, and I was like, he's part of, he doesn't know this, right? He's part of my dreams. Because if I'm successful one day, like I think about a diner that I used to go to that I love by the airport in South Burlington, Vermont, best corned beef hash. I wanna, I don't know, like I wanna give him a bunch of money to to help the cats and start an animal shelter. Like the, the breadth of how I want to do charity and giving and just like pour into things, I want to work on my success so that I can be in a position to be like, hey guy, can I give you a donation to help the cats because he goes to the store and and he buys all this cat food and he feeds them and um it is what it is some people would be like that's not right but like stray, stray cats are a thing you know whatever he cares for them and um he's a pal and i'm just sharing that because <laughs> i care deeply about animals and i don't think i care so deeply about animals, just the way I care so deeply about children. But I don't think my path is to start the animal shelter for the cats and the dogs, right? It's his path, he loves to do that. Nobody knows he does that. Nobody asked him to do that. He works hard, he makes money, he drives a truck, you know, but he takes that money to the store and he buys cat food. And he built them little, uh, you know, houses to live in. And that's his path. So. It's it's not all, you know, this is the beautiful thing about co-collaboration, co-creation with the universe, with others. I don't have to be the one to do that, but I know somebody who will, and I just want to become everything that I can be so that I can help him do that. And I feel that way about, you know, members of my family, friends. I'm like, I, I love what you do. I want you to be so successful. If I can ever help down the road, I will, you know, throw all that assistance. As, and we, we can always help each other without having, um, you know money to give to somebody to invest in something it's more than that it's more than that it's deeper than that but anyway all this energy is just like super beautiful and i wanted to share that because um i think it can help people think about their their lives and their goals and their ambitions in a different way like huh here you go here's the exercise if you had if you won the lottery tomorrow and you had 18.4 million dollars after tax okay what would you do with that money <laughs> most people would immediately start to list off the things that they would buy for themselves, you know? I would probably go around a few of my closest friends and family members and like, I don't know, I would pay off people's debt for them because that's one of the biggest burdens in life. And I, I would, I've also, this is a great exercise to do because it helps you, a lot of people want great abundance, but then they're constantly squandering their money away. So then the universe is like, no more for you. You don't know how to handle it. <laughs> you can't even handle that much money. Why would we give you this much money? You know what I mean? Oops, that was on my list of things to stop doing, but. <sighs> I've done that exercise so many times over the last 10 years. I like to think about it because I, not, not because I'm gonna waste my money on lottery tickets and expect myself to win the lottery, but because I want to prepare myself to have so much money because I'm meant to have it, because I'm a helpful person to the people around me and I believe in good causes, you know? A lot of wealth in the world has been unfortunately redirected to people that do not use it for good things. Think about the Kardashians. <laughs> they always get criticized. I'm not, they can live their lives, whatever. Um, well, that's not true. It's very problematic, but just the sheer amount of money that they, right? All of them have babies now and all these, you know, the one-year-old's birthday party probably cost 
$250,000 to put on. You know what I mean? There it is again. So uh, a lot of people squander wealth away. And I think that, I think that if you've seen my other videos, you might remember me talking about this thing that happened to me where I was sitting on my couch and I saw all of this wind outside. It was like activity. And I was keying into this swirl of abundance. Like the currency of money was something that needed to be harnessed and lassoed. And, um, oh, it has to do with like root chakra, like the Manipura, Manipura, um, sense of safety and security around abundance and whatnot. That you're already connected to that torrent of money and abundance. The way that you spend your money is going to inform Form how money comes to you. If I get money and all I do is buy alcohol and cigarettes day in, day out, repeat, 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 that's not helping anybody. In fact, it's just slowly destroying myself. Universe is like, she's just going to buy more alcohol and cigarettes. Not a bad thing. I mean, it, it's not a great thing. I'm saying, I'm saying it's not a bad thing in general. From a non judgmental perspective, that's okay actually think it's okay to drink and smoke but if that's you know where all your money goes then you're not in the flow of right I don't have to say more on that but let's get so this is this is the hidden energy I want some clarification around that but to summarize the advice is really look at how you might still be self-sabotaging The hardest thing about this is that people are like, well, I know, but I can't change it and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, well, just be gentle with yourself and, and keep trying. And, and every time you say can't, look at that and be like, well, why not? Also, I would recommend writing a list about what you would do if you won the lottery and trying to focus it, you know, less on like what, what you would buy and what you would do. I would go on, you know, vacation. I would do this. I would do that. Focus a little bit more on how you would change the lives of the people around you or how you would change the world. If you had all the ability to start some, I don't know, a nonprofit or do something that was beneficial, what would that look like? These are the types of daydreams that we must engage with. Yeah. That's good. Good, um, good activities. People are like, that's, that's silly. <laughs> Why would I do that? I don't know. Do whatever you want. <laughs> um, all right. Incoming energy. Yas. King of Pentacles. More stability. Just gotta, just gotta keep, devil energy, here's the other thing, and I said this the other day, it never goes away. It never goes away. It's part of this 3D reality. You have a choice. Oh, I really want to talk about this, but this is gonna make the video way too long. You have a choice. I'll talk about that later. You always have a choice to be led by love and connected to it or God. They're synonymous to be led by love and God and be connected to it or to be separate from it. That's the choice in every moment in everything. Um, Things make sense to me when I do these readings because it is me connecting to love and hearing the voice, you know, intentionally sitting down. I hear messages all day long, constantly in a, in a space of being expanded psychically enough. Didn't used to be because I couldn't protect my energy. I would get really expansive and, and hear, you know, my, my guidance and stuff, but I couldn't hold it around other people because there was, I, was, I was acclimating. I was getting stronger in myself. It takes a long time to adjust to these things, but it doesn't have to. It can happen quickly, you know. Uh, there was also periods when I didn't have guidance or anybody else to help me understand what was happening and going on with me. And then when I did have that, when I came into that, when I found that, then I, you know, I, I grew leaps and bounds in shorter amounts of time. But my path, I was meant to suffer and struggle alone in the dark because now I'm unfuckwithable. <laughs> Yay. Right. And so you, everybody has a choice. You can, you can. I'm, I'm, I'm a person out in the world who has issues and gets triggered all the time. But more and more, 
as a, as a person out in the world, not the one you know who sits here and does the readings, me living my life, more and more and more, I'm always choosing to respond from the love-based perspective, not the one that says like, well, fuck the haters and fuck them and that, that not taking things personally because I, because I know myself and I know that I'm doing my best and it's not about me in most cases. A lot of people project. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the incoming energy, which is super awesome. What's the biggest hurdle right now around like releasing devil energies? The reason why I said it never goes away is because it never, it never does. Temptations, right? In, in the brain and the thought patterns and the physical world with vices and addictions, like obsessive thinking. It, it, the temptation to do that never goes away. It's just how, it's just how often you practice not engaging with it. It's a practice, it's a muscle to strengthen. It doesn't mean it doesn't stop being hard either. I mean, it gets easier over time, but what's the biggest energy contribute what's what's the biggest energy contributing to like the, the difficulty around this i guess four of swords okay clarify yeah okay it's the four of swords and the seven of cups i mean this is obsessive think what i just said the biggest the biggest energy keeping us from being able to choose different is because we're in the ego mind the ego monkey mind right the chatter of the thoughts, we are listening to those thoughts, trying to make decisions and do things differently. But it's there's there's a battle here between the intuition and the ego. Okay. So it's it's counterintuitive, maybe you should turn off your brain a little bit. What is the advice for that kind of overthinking in a in a meditative space? This, is, this goes back to what I was talking earlier, where it's like we think that we are um, maybe processing something or doing productive thinking, but if it just turns into anxiety and obsessive thought pattern, you're not like meditating and connecting to your intuition. You're just burning mental fuel on not, you know, not being comfortable with not knowing how something's going to go. That's an inside job. You just have to start trying to become comfortable in the uncomfortable, in the unknown. What's the advice for that? This is the Nine of Swords. It's all about forgiveness right now. You have to forgive yourself for like the things that didn't work out. Just stop feeling like I'm seeing just it's shame energy again around like it's not another advice card. Yeah, it's over. It's done. A new cycle is here. Some of us have a really hard time separating ourselves from things that we regret doing or versions of ourselves that we were in the past. I said, I've said this before. Sometimes I, sometimes I go to take a shower. I have different kinds of showers. I have quick showers. I have showers where I wash my hair. I have hour-long showers where I'll be like doing some stuff and hanging out in there, listening to music. Sometimes I have an hour shower, a power hour shower. That's what I call it, to just chill and just kind of reconnect with myself. I'm a water sign. I love showering <laughs> and I choose to make it a portal of rejuvenation and cleanliness so that when I step out I'm in a new reality and I set intentions in there and I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna quantum leap right now I'm gonna go into a new you know it's it's all a it's just for me and what people fail to recognize is you can wake up a new person like here's the thing miracles are possible it's just that people don't believe in it so they don't occur as much Start to believe in miracles, because I do. And the more people that do, the more we'll see them. Because when there's more people who believe something, it tends to be true. That's why the world's all fucked up, because people believe all this shit that we're shown. It's not true. It's not true. I can feel it. <laughs> I'm sure you can too, if you've stuck with me to watch this video, right? But the biggest advice is that there's a lot of forgiveness that needs to be done. Just process the things that haven't, you know, all of these regrets, all of this craziness, this overthinking. Just be brand new in this energy. This is the biggest energy affecting us right now. I want a card to make the world, the emperor, and 
one more, their own spread. Mm. Yeah, we're really having a hard time crying over spilled milk, I think. And it's not necessarily a bad thing too. So here's the thing. I'm like, oh, you have to pull yourself out of this. You have to forgive yourself. You have to let it go. How do you do that? You just, you do the crying. <laughs> you do the feeling of the guilt. You feel the shame. You let it be what it was. I don't know what happened, but listen, it did happen. And there's only one way to process it is, is by really acknowledging it somehow or another. So I'm not saying like, just move on and not process. Um, but I'm seeing Ten of Wands, although it hasn't come out. There is this new way of being that we can be excited about that's coming into view that's going to lead to stability. Is this the king? No, that was the swords. It's gonna lead to stability. It's gonna lead to emotional fulfillment with the nine of cups. And just so you can see me do it, I'm gonna cut the deck to get like a lasting note to end off on. The queen of cups, emotional fulfillment. Nine of cups, queen of cups. Here's another thing about that man at the dog park. He wasn't connected to the energy of love. He wants to be in love and have a partner, but he can connect to the energy of love without having that because you can love an animal. You can love a project. I, single or with somebody, am always in love with something. I'm in love with, you know, the clouds. I'm in love with my outfit. I'm in love with her outfit. <laughs> There's always something to be in love with and that's how I choose to live my life because I want to be connected to love frequency because it's where everything comes from. It's creative energy. It's the beautiful energy of life. So my advice to him too would be to fall in love with something and then love will come to you because you'll be in that love energy. And I'm also hearing warts and all. It's a phrase, right? Love you warts and all. So this has to do with self-love right now too. I think we're coming into a much greater understanding of what it means to love ourselves and therefore be able to love other people. And that's super beautiful. <laughs> okay, that's enough for today. And I hope everybody's doing well. And um, look forward to the full moon reading because it's going to be really cool. And I'll probably share more about things that I'm doing around this full moon. Um, I actually think I'm going to make a playlist and put it on the community page just to like of songs that I've been listening to that I've been coming through in channel. Oh, a song I got this morning given to me. I haven't listened to this song in a long time. It's called Strange and Beautiful by Aqualung. Heard it for the first time about 11 years ago, this time of year, a little more into the fall already, but it was like, I was falling in love with somebody um, and they showed me this song and just the, the season, the Christmas of the leaves kind of coming in it. I just, haven't thought about that song in a long time and I kind of heard it and um, so that's a good one. Strange and Beautiful by Aqualung. But yeah, I kind of thought that because I get so many songs in channel, I could make a full moon playlist um, if anybody wanted to listen to it. So 